From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Welcome, brother Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Enough with the Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh, ha What's up, everybody? This is D from Brooklyn with a much requested update on the salt water side of things. I had to show a lot of love for my freshwater people because then again, most of us have started this hobby from the freshwater side. And I have to admit, it was my first love in getting into the hobby. But getting back to you guys on the salt water side, I got a big update on the 125 coming. But I've been making a lot of observations in regards to changes on the Nano Reef here. I showed you guys my uh, innovative marine swirling stream there uh, to explain how I get my circulation the way it goes, uh, the way it is. And you can see it from the top down view exactly what I'm talking about. How it covers pretty much most of the tank because of the positioning of the pump. From the top down, you can also see my WP25, which just basically sends the water back towards my overflow over there and across my little built-in algae refugium, which is pretty clean right now because I took most of it out. Um, one of the things I wanted to go over in this video is A, coral aggressiveness. If you guys are not subscribed, click subscribe now and uh, take a flashback in time to when this tank was started about two years ago it was a year and a half but oh yeah about two years ago there were no purple mushrooms in this tank and if you look from the top down view you can see i pretty much moved my mushrooms from the upstairs tank by moving one piece of rock i had one piece of rock that i used to move a frag into this tank and from that little piece which i think was this one right here it moved the whole purple, what I used to call the Smurf Village, to the nano tank, which is a beautiful thing. But you got to realize when you move any piece of coral into another system, they will establish dominance just like a fish, just like anything else, just like in the plant world. And uh, this one, being from a much more nutrient high tank, is doing absolutely marvelous in this tank where the nutrients are much lower um, what I do run into is a lot of aggressiveness from the Pavona the Pavona definitely fights for dominance as you can see it started as a little piece on the top of this rock and you can see it has shaded a lot of the coral under it even spreading to the rock below there was a frag in this spot that I don't even actually it wasn't even a frag I moved this piece I'm trying to keep the camera in focus here I moved this little piece which used to be down here but I thought it wasn't getting enough light down there or rather it was just growing up so I took that whole rock that it was on it and moved it up here you can't even see the rock that it was originally on that's how much it's grown up. It was a little piece the size of a quarter. Pretty much how I start all of my frags. It was a little piece just like this. And you can see I've started several colonies that I plan on giving to friends. Uh, and it just moved and grew up toward the light, actually shading out one of my uh, nice pasilloporas that I really liked. <laughs> I'm gonna actually, I guess I'm gonna have to move that. And uh, this one has grown out to kind of compensate. It's grown out into the light, which I have to watch because it only gives me a little bit of space so that I can clean the glass. But from the top down view, you can really see how these guys are fighting for dominance. Another thing that I'm also fighting all the time is these Astarina stars. They are a pest. If you have these in your tank and you think they're cute, believe me, they're not cute. They multiply super fast and they will chew on the bottom sides of corals. If you don't believe me, leave them in your tank for a while. You'll see. They multiply in vast numbers and then you'll see corals start to die out from the bottom. It's usually those Astorina starfish. They are a nuisance. But uh, that is as far as I go with the coral aggressiveness. You can see I had some Xenia here that I moved. Guess what's coming up underneath? 
I left one little piece and they're coming up under my variety now they must have been under the egg crate it only takes one so I'm keeping that in check and another thing that I had to talk about is what you feed the coral as you know I have the uh, molly tank over there which is super grown with algae and stuff they've been living off of that and I feed my fry the first bites and let me just pause so I can show you what I'm talking about okay so now to show you what I'm talking about this is the powdered fry food and I'm gonna move it so that you can see this is what I feed my fry my baby fish this is first bites which is made by Hikari and now this is reef roids over here which I feed my coral if you take a closer look they look like the exact damn thing <laughs> so I have actually been experimenting with the first bites powder and with the reef roids powder in both tanks because my fry eat the very small particular food. They're hard to see. I fed them already, so they've kind of gone into the grass. They, they go deep into the grass. They come out in large numbers when I feed them, but they've been feeding on the powdered foods, and I'm for the life of me trying to see what the difference is between these two foods, because once again, we get kind of crazy with the names of all these things. But at the end of the day, they're only ingredients. So I'm a big believer in knowing why you do things and what they are. I'm not a jump on a bandwagon type of guy. Anybody will tell you I'm old school. I don't have a lot of equipment and all that stuff. And it's hard to focus on this. But basically what it says is it's basically crude protein, fat, fiber, and at the end of the day, marine plankton is supposed to be the main ingredient. Whereas the first bites is pretty much the same thing. Crude fat, plankton. The only thing about this is the first bites actually contains krill oil, fish eggs, and all these other things that I would believe, well, other than the dried yeast and flour, which are fillers and fatteners, Pretty much the same things that you would be doing for fry to put growth on them, you'd be doing to put coral growth on. So, <laughs> keep a look, click subscribe, check it out because I'm going to be experimenting with both of them. Basically, going between both tanks and, you know, checking out the deal, seeing what the deal is. Right here I mix them, but usually I feed them separate. I don't feed a thick consistency because I don't have corals that require that other than like the uh, variety and things like that. Uh, probably want to do that a little bit more, but I like to encourage people to experiment, ask questions, see why things work and understand how they work. I'm constantly pulling coral out of here when it gets overgrown and starting all over again. So the tank always has empty spots. Uh, I did get some burn on my chalice back there. You can see I lost a lot of it. I found the urchin uh, was taking a dump over there on a regular. And it kind of really did some damage. So <coughs> I'm going to frag those back and start that over again. Just take off the dead pieces off and start that over. But once again, knowing why things happen and how they happen. Uh, and you might be asking yourself, D, there's no fish in there. Yes, I got another video on that coming up. So once again, click subscribe so you can see why there are no fish in here. Uh, there's a good answer behind that. I'm going to tell you they didn't die, but they are living in another home, happy home. So that'll be it. So click the like button. If you have any questions, post them below. Uh, this started out as an experiment. Nothing running this tank, but the built-in sump that I did in the auto top off. Auto top off is my son's uh, protein powder container. <laughs> auto top off and uh, overflow. Overflow is uh, 
filter floss my little protein skimmer so yeah this is it keep it simple kiss method the swirl does an excellent job you can see no dead spots I get movement throughout the tank even over here I get movement everywhere sweeper tentacles yeah those are fun too <laughs> alright everybody I'm gonna be out this is D signing out love peace and hair grease tank on and here's a quick peek beep okay that's it quick peek coming soon see ya